Hey there everyone, I'm Seth the Dead, and welcome to Hollow Week uh, 4 again. I'm playing the Dark Fear. This is awesome. What the heck is this? Yeah. What the... I know nothing of... What is this? What is that? What is that up there? Uh... Okay, so right before I started playing this, it actually said... You need to... You need to have a pen and paper ready. Like, what am I gonna be doing? Uh... Shit! Those who succeed, reach for the stars. Stop. I had a feeling. Awa? Awak? Awake. Awaken. Rise and awaken. Your eyes slowly open to be greeted with darkness. That's my favorite thing to wake up to. You feel a little dizzy as the cobwebs in your mind begin to clear. As you regain consciousness, you begin wondering where you are, or even who you are. You reach down and feel a hard wooden surface beneath you. The musty smell of rotting wood suggests you're in a building of some kind. Your eyes attempt to focus on your surroundings as you struggle to see properly. Whoa, what? Can that, like, go away? What is this? You can barely make out the outline of a small object and left carefully you reach and pick it up. Object feels like a small cardboard box. The mild sulfury aroma muffled rattling sounds come from the box suggested a box of mass matches. It's in your pocket. Pick a call an item and examine it. You can use an item. Click and drag it outside. Okay. Let's put it on this stupid thing. You open the box and pull out a match. You feel around you and you find the head of the match and strike it against the sandy surface on the side of the box. As it flares up, it illuminates a large glass object, which turns out to be a lamp. You carefully light the lamp. Yeah! The oil lamp slowly flickers, lights, and illuminates your surroundings to reveal a small, unfamiliar-looking log cabin. What's this? A large, rusty toolbox. You attempt to open the box, but it's locked shut. The lock itself appears to be rusted pretty badly. There's a door. There's some rope. Barely see anything through the small window besides a few silhouettes of trees against the dark blue night sky. Attempting to open it is useless, but as it doesn't look like it was designed to be opened. A dusty old sinister looking portrait of a well dressed elderly gentleman hangs on the wall. You take a closer look. You gaze into the piercing eyes of the haunting portrait. You are overcome with a chilling feeling of familiarity. Hey, it's me! Though <laughs> you have no idea who this is, you can shake the feeling that you somehow know him. Something about this photo feels extremely significant to you. You carefully remove the portrait from the wall and carry it with you. Really? Rusty nail was his holding up the portrait of the elderly man. As the nail doesn't seem to be of much use on the wall anymore, you reach over and pull, carefully pull it out. Perhaps you can find another use. Let's stick this thing in there. Slide into the lock and attempt to pick it. Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no way! You look inside the tow box and notice it's completely empty with the exception of an old crowbar and a shiny sewing needle laying at the bottom. You reach inside and pick up the old crowbar. From its poor condition, it looks like it's on its last legs. You're not sure how much use it could be, but your pocket in any way. You pick up the sewing needle. It's empty box. You would have already taken what was already inside. You find inside from its condition, it looks like it's on its last legs. So it's going to break almost as soon as I use it. Sturdy looking coil of rope hangs from the wall. You pick up the rope. I hold the handle, try to open it, but a gem says, Seems like you're stuck here. I know what to do. Yeah! You carefully jam the old crowbar between the door and the frame and attempt to force it open. Yes! Must it look rocky? This music's really loud. Finally swings open. Unfortunately, you broke your crowbar in the process, but it's given condition. You're lucky you managed to get at least one good use out of it.
Gavin is like, it's forced open. You, the lock is nearly broken now. All right. Can I take this with me? Oh, okay. Whoa, what the fuck? You step out and find yourself a small forest clearing. Your surroundings are unfamiliar and you still have no idea how you got here. You see a badly injured man lying on the ground nearby. It looks like he's been attacked. What's this thing? <laughs> small metal container carefully left aside, probably by whoever owns the cabin. Despite being full of holes, you figure it would come in useful... Useful... Wait. It would come in useful anyway. Decide to pick it up and take it with you. Hello, sir. The man notices your presence, so he looks up and speaks. Thank goodness you've come! Please help me. It was out hunting and was attacked by a coyote. He was blocking the way to the village and won't let me leave this place. You suddenly hear a rustling behind you. Dear God, help us. He's come back. Here, take this and finish him off before he kills us both. I have neither the strength nor the stamina to swing it. He hands you a small woodcutter's axe. And a health bar. Why would you do this? The man's eyes widen as he points behind you. Look out, here he comes. Angry coyote jumps out at you from behind a bush. Get ready to defend yourself. What is happening? <laughs> Your move. Um. Oh shit, you're ready to swing your axe at the thing. Yeah, you strike the 75% strength. Because it takes a swipe at you. Ow! Only one damage, really. This is awesome. Your move. Oh shit, 100%. Ugh. He's a swipe at me. Is he just pawing me? Time to die, creature. Coyote defeated. Battle won. Yeah. The man looks at you, smiles and breathes a sigh of relief. Thank you so much for helping me, my friend. You may keep the axe as a token of my gratitude. Are you sure you don't need it? And there's a little something extra for your trouble. It gives you some ten gold coins before standing up and slowly limping away. I got ten gold. Where'd you go? Exit to a map. Uh, oh, I guess I'm going to a new location. Alright then. Alright, that's not so bad. Once you've taken the time to travel to a new location, you'll be able to fast travel there without any problems. Just beware, you may be tacked on your first trip to certain places. Where the hell am I? Nothing is interactive except of what is in front of me. Ah, hello. You greet the hulking man. He briefly looks over you, looks you over and smiles. You look greener than grass, stranger. It's not often we get visitors showing up with all that's going on here. Uh, who are you? My name is Olaf. I'm the weapons master and the blacksmith here. Where am I? Bosnian looks at you a little shocked. You picked up. Bad time to be lost here, my friend. But for your information, you're in the village of Ravenwood. The only safe place in this cursed land we call Diablo Valley. What a wonderful place. Diablo Valley. <laughs> You're lucky you even made, made it. Most visitors head back home if they don't end up dead. End up dead? Why? That might have been something to do with all the deadly animals. <laughs> Ghosts, flesh-eating monsters and demons who made Diablo Valley their home. Flesh-eating monsters and demons. Oh, joy. It wasn't always like this. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> This land was a lot safer when I was a little boy. Take my advice, stranger. You're gonna need more than that puny little axe if you're gonna survive here. I can tell you something better. But my stock is a little limited given my supplies refusal to deliver here. The trade route that cuts through Nightshade Forest is not longer, no longer safe to travel through. Nightshade Forest? That sounds stupid. It's a few miles northwest of here. The main trout road cuts through but a bunch of... But as of recently, the forest has become unsafe. Now don't get me wrong, most well-armed folks can handle a few wolves. It's that the other thing lurking there, hiding in the trees like some devil, which is causing all the trouble. Whatever it is, it's neither human nor animal. I tell you, this land is cursed. Whatever god you believe in or don't believe in, it'll do you no good. Here, we're all in the same boat. You ask me if there is a god, I think he's forsaken us all. Ugh. Alright, Olaf. Uh, oh, now I can set it up. Well, that's really loud. <laughs> Let's save this game. Alright. Um, 30G, yo. Alright. So I can't ask about that monster? That monster mash, really? 
Your current weapon is, is an X. It deals four damage. A total of four damage when you hit the crit. Ugh. Have you seen this before? That doesn't work. <laughs> Alright. What's this? There's a rope tied to a well. The bucket which was attached to the other end is, appears to be missing. It's an old well. From the overall smell and condition, you're assuming it's not been used for a long time. Peering down the well, you notice a small dark object floating in the several inches of stagnant water at the bottom. <coughs> you attach the metal cup to the end of the rope. You lower the metal cup into the well. Eventually, it hits the water with a small splash and sinks. You grab the rope and gently pull the cup out of the well. Hey, why look? You appear to have caught something. Peering inside the cup, you notice a small dark leather pouch. You carefully open and discover... <gasps> Let's go back to the shop. Let's go back to the shop. Totally useless for, dra for drawing water. Besides, judging from the small, you're guessing the water down here is pretty stagnant. Let's go by... It can be hung from the belt, traditionally used for both hunting and combat. It deals up to 14 damage. Yes! You purchased the short sword. Fuck yeah! Oh, I get a long sword eventually. Alright. Sick. Do I just drop the... <laughs> Do I just leave the thing where it is? So, that's it? Well, I guess I'm going this way. Oh boy, I can't wait to go to the place where there's an evil creature running around. That's my favorite. As you enter Nightshade Forest, you see an angry, vicious pack of wolves heading in your direction. Do you fight these wolves? Hell yeah, we fight these wolves. Prepare for battle! One wolf. Oh, number one. I'm going to attack him. Oh, dude. This dude's gonna die. Yeah, get out of here. Wolf number two approaches. Be gone, foul beast. With thy new short sword, you will be felled. Come on. What you gonna do, wolf? You better run away. I wonder what defending does. I'm gonna defend. Ah, defense failed. Shit. Alright, well. Battle one. You gain a total of 60 gold. After defeating the only three wolves, the rest quickly get the message and scatter like rats. Hopefully they're gone for good. That was one bloody battle, but it seems you've successfully cleared the area. Should I leave? I'm a little hurt right now. Oh, I'm getting health back. Up at the top right, I'm gaining health back. Okay. What the fuck? There's a big dead tree which stands ominously in the forest clearing. Something's not right about this tree. You can't help but feel uneasy from its mere presence. Alright, well I'm just gonna leave. No experience strange plants of the dark enticing fruit appears to be deadly nightshade. You don't feel comfortable touching it with your bare hands. You've heard too many bad stories about this poisonous plant. What's this? You notice a stick lying on the forest floor. Although totally useless in combat, you figure something like this may be handy in another situation. Take up the stick and carry it with you. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna poke the tree with the stick. Ha ha! <laughs> Be gone, creature. <laughs> Alright. Um, I'm gonna light the tree on fire. I mean, it doesn't work. Of course it does. Huh. 
All right, well, I guess there's nothing else for me to do. Maybe grab, maybe poke the stick. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, yeah, let's get out of here. Yo, what's good? The wolves in Nightshade Forest won't bother anyone. Again, you mean you cleared the place out all by yourself? You got some stones for going out there alone, I'll give you that. But I, like I said before, the wolves aren't the problem in that, is that tree demon. Now, if you're thinking of slaying that thing, take heed and listen. Go talk to Seema next door. She's not one for weapons or combat, but the woman knows a thing or two about medicine and the occult. She has all the details on that demon and other of its ilk. Tell her I sent you and tell her you're a friend of mine. Anyone as brave as you is okay by me. Fuck yeah. I got that cojones. Also, I'm I'm five gold away. Could you, like, give me a reward so I could give that money back to you and pay for a new goddamn sword? I, I knew it. I was five away. Oh, hello. You greet, the, you greet the beautiful woman in the exotic dress. She looks at you skeptically. Skeptically. Before speak, finally speaking with a so, strong Asian accent. Is there something... Uh, <laughs> what is she, Haitian? Is there something I can help you with? I'm a friend of Olaf. He sent me here. You consider yourself... Then consider yourself welcome. Any friend of Olaf is a friend of mine. Yes. I'm happy you've gained his trust. He's not been the same since he lost his daughter, Emily. You must forgive people here if they are not so trusting at first. As Olaf no doubt told you, this is not a good time to be visiting. Um, so who are you? My name is Seema. I'm an... Ayurvedic... Ayurvedic... <laughs> Arivadurchi healer... <laughs> Healer and astrologer from the Far East. I also know a little about magic and its effects. Care to explain? Olaf said you can help me defeat the tree demon. So you believe you can slay that beast? If that's what you truly believe, then I will not discourage you. The tree spirit's in the vile is a okay. The tree spirit is a vile being that resides somewhere north of Nightshade Forest. Not an easy creature to destroy, but it can be done. Is it? I was gonna. I was gonna wonder if it had something to do with Nightshade. You need to lure it from its resting place using nightshade essence, which can be made from the fruit of the belladonna plant. Now that the forest is free of wolves, it should be easier to collect the berries. She reaches down and pulls open a wooden, small wooden drawer and takes out a few small sheets of paper. Here, use these to help you collect the fruits. The belladonna plant is extremely poisonous, and you will need to protect your hands as even as even the slightest... Lightest contact with your flesh can be most unpleasant. Bring me those berries and I will do the rest. Where do I find these berries again? Blah, blah, blah. I know where to find them. Uh, uh, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ding, dang, wada, wada, bing, bang. Uh, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ding, dang, wada, wada, bing, bang. Carefully use the medicinal papers to protect your hands as you proceed to pick the poisonous berries from the plants. Sick. I don't want to go forward because I feel like something stupid's gonna happen. Hey, baby, how you doing? You hand seam in the nightshade berries. She carefully looks them over, checking the texture and smelling them. Yes, these are potent mixture for the <laughs> enough for the mixture. I don't know why she's Haitian. I just think voodoo witch. That's what I think. And since you collected more than enough berries, here's a little something for your trouble. Yes. Mm. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Madam, I will be going off and buying a brand new sword. And here, I also want you to have this. It hands you a small vial filled with the bright red liquid. Is it health item? <laughs> this potion will generate up to 50 HP of health. Use it during combat when your health is low to give you an advantage. You can also drink it any time outside of combat if your health is really low. Health potions can be accessed from the option screen, so during combat. The tree demon has prevented any supplies from reaching this town, so I am not able to create any of the more stronger potions until Nightshade Forest is totally safe to pass through. Killing him is of great advantage to me, so I will make you this promise. If you use up the potion, I will give you another one free of charge as many times as necessary. However, after you defeat the tree demon, I would kindly request that you purchase my potions like everyone else. This is all I can do for you. Now please, excuse me while I prepare the Nightshade Essence for you. She adds the Nightshade Berries to a ceramic mortar and begins crushing them using a pestle. She then... Adds all kinds of strange powders and liquids to this crushed berries. 
which she skillfully grinds and mixes using swift circular motions. She then proceeds to pour the liquefied contents of the mortar into a glass vial and hands it to you. Take this and pour the contents onto any tree trunk and you suspect the home of a tree-dwelling demon. It will be enough to lure the creature out, but if nothing happens, strike the tree a few times and wait. It will come. Might be where I... Might have something to do with what I'll do with the stick. So I got... A small glass vial filled with nightshade essence. The dark liquid is supposed to lure any tree-dwelling spirit or demon out in the open. Cool! This is cool! Hey dude, how you doing? I want to upgrade my sword. A large sword, originating from Europe with a two-handed grip and a long straight blade. It deals up to 25 damage. I'm gonna need this. Yes. Sorry, my friend. Sorry, my friend. I know new weapons available right now. Check back later. See, I was imagining him also being in Southern, too. So, I can't, I can't help myself. Even though his name is Olaf. All right. Actually, yeah, maybe, wait, I'm going to go show her this. Do you know who this is? I guess you don't care. Okay, let's save. Yeah, all right, let's do this. Pour the nightshade essence onto the trunk of the big dead tree and keep the empty vial glass. You wait patiently. Hmm, nothing happened. You wonder what could be wrong. I know what I need to do. Hello? That doesn't work. You strike the tree trunk at once. Hey! Come out here, you stupid demon! Oh my god. What the devil is that? <gasps> Jesus Christ. Oh my god. 25 damage. You're dead, creature! The tree demon takes a swipe at you. Shit! Alright, potion. Taking the potion. almost dead. I can take one more hit. Oh, I missed. <gasps> no, he missed. Oh, die. Die, bitch, die. Yes. Oh, yes. And he turned into goop. Well done. You've defeated the tree demon. It falls to the ground and melts into a pool of black, sticky, tar-like liquid. As it does so, it drops something behind it. The atmosphere of the forest feels a lot lighter and more comfortable. You feel safe here now. What's that? The child's pup poppet lies on the ground which was dropped by the tree demon. You pick up the poppet and examine it. You see the name Emily written on the back. Hmm, you're pretty certain you heard that name bef back before the village. That would be what's-his-face. Small pool of thick tarry sticky tar when you killed it. You take a blob of tar. I take a blob? Don't you think I would use the vial? Why would I pick up the blob? What? Okay. <laughs> Fine. That's fine, too, I guess. Alright, let's get- let's go back. Um... The tree demon is no longer a threat. You've done all us a great service. May the goddess bless you. My potions are now available for you to purchase, although I have nothing that's too strong right now. I hope a little I can be of a service to you. When will you have some stronger potions? As soon as I receive a batch of new supplies, I'll begin working on a stronger potion. I promise. In the meanwhile, you can still purchase the minor health potions. Who are you? You see, I did it all in one go. So, um... I, I, it must have been that I could have royally fucked up, you know? I'm gonna... I'm gonna buy two. Donka! 
If things like this exist in our world, I'm gonna, like, just buy a good a bit. Hello, sir. The tree demon is dead. Nightshade forest is clear. You're pretty handy with a weapon, I'll give you that. Thanks to you clearing out the nightshade forest, my suppliers should now be able to get through. As a token of my gratitude, I'll sell you my most prized blade at a very agreeable price. This thing comes from the east and is made of folded steel. It's sharper and lighter than any sword I've ever seen. What is it? What is it? What is it? <gasps> I could have bought it if I could. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. It's a katana. That's 42 damage. Shit. Here you go. And the Papa de Olaf. If says from Cirrus as he slowly takes an exam and he suddenly looks at you. Where did you find this? It belonged to my little baby girl, Emily. This is the one beautiful thing after my wife left him after dying church by. Now she's... I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about it. It's obvious she's pretty upset. Perhaps someone else could tell you about Emily. I fucked up. I fucked up. I didn't mean to buy that. Eh, fuck. I didn't mean to buy. Shit. I shouldn't have done that. I would have had enough. I didn't realize. Can you tell me about Emily? You mean Olaf's daughter? Let me guess, you won't talk about it, right? Emily was one of the happiest, most beautiful little girls I've ever seen. Ever since Olaf's wife passed away, Emily was most beloved to him and would always have been clinging to her father. Then one night, Emily suddenly disappeared. Naturally, Olaf was devastated and believing she was alive, well, spent months searching the entire valley for her. She was never found. Some believe she's dead. Then there's others who believe the porcelain doll story. Porcelain doll? An abandoned plantation house lies to the east, which is haunted by the presence of a violent demonic child. In my heart, I believe this child to be Emily. As you can imagine, Olaf refuses to acknowledge this, although deep down I suspect he knows it to be true. I believe the child to be possessed by a powerful spirit called Lamaya. I know what those are, which is said to devour the souls of children. Once possessed, the child cannot be exercised, and there is nothing that, that can be done. The possessed child is obsessed with the destruction, and will slaughter anything that crosses its path. What if I destroyed her? Your eyes suddenly widen as she looks at you with concern. No, you mustn't. You have no idea how dangerous it is. Let me tell you, this is nothing like. This is nothing like the tree demon you, mur you encountered. It may have the appearance of an innocent child, but that thing is pure evil and unlike anything you see. You risk your life even going there. If I do it, will you help me find out why I'm here? Seema hesitates and looks at you for a moment. You really mean to go there and slay that monster? She breathes a short sigh. Well, if that's what you truly believe, then I will not discourage you. You'd be doing this town a great service, and yes, I'd be happy to help you in any way. I can promise you that. That demon child in the plantation house will appear if you simply spell her name. But beware, that creature is extremely dangerous and cares only for your destruction. You're going to need more than just health potions. I strongly recommend you get better protection before venturing there. Speak to Ivan. He has a store next to the pond in the village square. His expertise in tailoring and his knowledge of protective clothing is remarkable. Uh, weaponsmith, she haunts the nearby plantation. Don't go there. <laughs> Alright. Fook yeah. Alright. Hello there. You look just like Olaf. <laughs> you approach the well dressed tailor who greets you with a smile. What can I do for you, stranger? Uh, I like. Who are you? I am Ivan. My expertise is sewing and clothing. I also know a thing or two about armor and protective garments. I'd like some protective clothing, please. I'm happy to sell you whatever you need, but you're going to have to provide me with some raw materials first. Unfortunately, due to my complications with my suppliers, I have no p animal pelts left. S so each item of clothing you buy from me will cost you a certain amount of gold plus a number of animal pelts. Where do I find animal pelts? You can hunt animals on various locations so long as they are clear of danger. You should try Nightshade Forest. I hear it's safe to go there again. Remember, you can only carry a certain number of pelts. If you need money, just sell me any surplus pelts you have, and I'll gl g gladly buy them from you. Can you tell me about the animal pelts again? Blah, blah, blah. Sell them, then sell them. Upgrade armor. I need 70G. I also need... Sick. Alrighty. Let's go hunting. Yeah, I ain't going there yet. I ain't gonna bother. I'm gonna I'm gonna grind first. Dripping down it. It's weird how I have this thing. I it's like Why do I have a stick?
Yeah, I caught a badger. <laughs> All right. Caught a deer. I just grappled it. It was very easy for me. I ripped his head off. You gain the following pelts. Hell yeah. What do I got? Three out of eighteen. All right, I, I'm just gonna collect a shit ton. You got nothing better to do. It's a rabbit. Hey, little rabbit. Don't run from Papa Seth. I'm coming to get you. You little bastard. <laughs> you think you can outrun me? You can't. I caught a badger. The first thing I caught coming here was a fucking badger. <laughs> ah, my, that's my neck. You caught a rabbit! Seems like the only thing I'm finding is just rabbits now. Alright, that should be it. I can buy a little bit more. I want that sword. I like suplexed it. It's a badger. Man, badgers are rare. Uh, I feel like I could just hang. If I hang on to the badgers, maybe uh, you know, I don't sell them. Because the first armor upgrade is a uh, first armor upgrade. Is a is with uh with rabbit uh was it rabbit fur yeah that's one pelt two more pelts I get that fluffy bunny an elk hey there elk how you doing master of this forest I am your master now. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh. There we go. Yes. Sick. How much money do I have? Not a lot. I could get a lot. Ooh. What do I need? 150, yeah? Sorry, there's no new available armor. Okay, so I'm gonna just sell a bunch. Um, yeah, here you go. It's literally, like, no issue to me. Oop. Yes! Oh, fuck yeah. Alright, let's go. Hello there, sir. I like that. Oh, it was 140. Alright. I forgot. Buy it! Yes! I believe I am ready. Alright, well that's it. Let's put it in down there. <laughs> Let's just throw the goop down there. That'll be good. Here, do you want this? Listen. Okay, listen. Here, you want this? You don't want the goop? Alright. Who are you? Who are you? Ah, uh, fine. Well, it looks like I'm prepared for death. I've got two things. You know what I'm gonna go do? I'm gonna go hunting and buy myself a bunch of stuff. Small pool of blood on the came of the injured man. There's no way you're touching it, besides there's no need for it anyway. Sir? Where'd he go? Where'd 
Where'd that dude go? Standing on a blood red moon hanging. If that's what that is? It's much larger than usual, and the eerie redness hues chills down your spine. You still puzzle how you woke up locked inside of a cabin with no memories whatsoever. How do you have no idea whose cabin this is? You only assume it was something to do with the person whose photo you found there. Yeah, I'm sure if I show the fo if I show the photo to that lady, she can help me. Alright, let's go hunting for a bit. Let's go hunting. Cause I wanna stock up on health potions before I go off to that uh that haunted place. This is awesome. This is really cool. Hello, master of this forest. Bow before your new god. I wonder how I go hunting. Was that? Oh, I was like, what? That did not look like a deer. <laughs> I thought it was like a mountain lion. Dressed up like a deer. Okay, so badgers are the uh, the most expensive ones. Elks only give me 11. Badgers give me 20 each. That's awesome. And I caught a badger the first time I came here. Must have been like a little mafia of them, huh? There's rabbits everywhere. I was surprised that there's so many rabbits with what, like, the wolves that were running around this place. You'd think there wouldn't be so many rabbits. At least, I think it would be... Like, th that there are a natural... Oh my god. They're a natural prey. For the uh, for the wolves, so I can only imagine. Can only catch one more. Damn! If it, if it's a badger, it's only a rabbit. All right, that's it. Let's go back. People outside my door making so much noise. Sell all. Yes. Hello, baby. Okay. So I'm planning on maybe if we can go get the, uh, we can go exercise that demon. Emily. All right, let's do it. I think that'll be a good stopping point. I mean, we'll see. It says we you know, there's a chance that we might get attacked on our first travel. Oh, a pair of, a pair of scruffy, shabby-looking large white wolves angrily block your way. You're not one. You're not sure if these wolves have anything to do with the smaller ones you encountered in Nightshade Forest. Perhaps this is an act of revenge for killing all their buddies. They frequently glare and growl at you before suddenly charging in your direction. Looks like you've got no choice but to bite them off. White wolf approaches. Yeah. Dude. You just got fucked. <laughs> only three da- only seven damage. That's some that's that's rookie numbers. Come at me. Come at me. Come on. You can do better than that. Dead. Okay. An eerie looking house stands before you in the middle of a dried up field. Something doesn't feel right about this place and it's giving you the chills. Creepy old ruined plantation stands before you. Parts of the house appear to be rotten. The paintwork is all chipped and flicked and there's moss hanging from the edges. Nobody has lived here for a 
long time. An ominous feeling burns you deep down in the pit of your stomach. Your intention is warning you not to get any closer. There's a rock. They spot a broken brick on the ground. You picked up the broken brick. Chuck the brick. <laughs> Throw it. <laughs> Just break the window. That, 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 that. Alright, let's move on. As you approach the door, you're distracted by something above. A chill goes down your spine. You realize something or someone is staring at you from the open window. Oh my god. Whatever that thing is, it knows you're here. You had better be careful. <laughs> Take a step back. Hell no, bro. Um, front door is surprisingly unlocked. Of course it is. And then again, given the overall poor state of the house and the fact that it's abandoned, you're not really surprised at all. Alright. Let's fucking do this. You enter the dark hallway of the plantation house. The light, uh, lack of lighting gives the place an unsettling, eerie feeling. The entire house looks like it's been vandalized and demolished from the inside. A small storage covered under the stairs. Unfortunately, it's locked. It's an expensive and majestic looking grandfather clock. The front panel looks it, like it was designed to be open, but it is locked. Judging from the size of the keyhole, it seems like you're going to need a very small key to get into it. It's a dusty old mirror with a golden frame. Judging from the intricate artwork on the frame, you're guessing whoever lived here was pretty well off financially. What the fuck is... What the fuck? What the fuck? You're not sure if it was your imagination, but you could have sworn you saw something skull across the wall. Oh, shit. A child's diary, which is empty with the exception of the first page has been written in. Do I want to? Four women argued over who has to be the devil's concubine. They stood before Satan and brought forth gifts to win his pleasure. The first woman presented a necklace of gold and claimed it could make the skies rain fire. The second woman presented a ring of silver and claimed it could dry up the oceans. The third woman presented a bracelet covered in emeralds and claimed it would bring plagues and famine. Famine. The fourth woman presented a ruby encrusted brooch and claimed it could destroy the soul of any living being. The devil claimed each woman and took each gift in the order that they were presented, for it was the only way to unlock his icy black heart. The crude handwriting suggests it was written by a child. You find it hard to believe a child would have such a morbid imagination. What's this? I notice a bottle of olive oil on the table. You pick up the olive oil. Of course you do. Let's get the... <laughs> olive oil, huh? Despite the fear of earning yourself from seven years of bad luck, you launch a brick at the at the mirror. Why, look, a portion of the wall, black wall is missing. It seems the mirror is hiding a crude secret compartment. Behind the jagged shards of glass sticking up from the frame, you notice a small box inside, the hollow cabin on the wall. You carefully reach into the hole and take out the box. You open the box and see a selection of creepy-looking torture equipment. What? Among them are chains, hooks, whips, and various other ghastly objects, most of which are stained with what appears to be dried blood. You pick out the only clean item in the box, a medium-sized metal hook, which looks like a butcher's meat hook for hanging carcasses. You pocket the meat hook and then carefully close and place the box back where you found it. These stairs are totally wrecked. You wonder what kind of person would have allowed them to degrade to such a dire situation. Dire condition. As much as you love to see what's upstairs, this damaged staircase prevents you from doing so. Perhaps you should find an alternative way to get up there. Yeah, there we go. You tie the end of the rope to the meat hook. Um, a small key, huh? Maybe that doesn't work. I mean, I was able to jiggle the thing inside of it. All right, never mind. Eh, da da da. Perhaps there is a way that I can climb this. Okay. 
or not. Oh, there we go. The broken banister. Although some of the railings are missing, the part of the banister with stones is looked pretty strong and sturdy to you. Oh, yes! The swing the rope hook and above your head and aim for the banister. Success! You managed to hook the rope to the sturdy... Yes! At least now you can climb and see what's up there. Let's do it! After climbing the rope, you enter the only accessible room on the upper floor. Judging from the large toy chest, you're suggesting this used to be a child's bedroom or playroom. The old sewing machine which looks rusty and unusable. You see a small bobbin of green cotton thread on top of a sewing machine. Given how it's the only useful thing here, you can pick up the bobbin and pocket it. Interesting. Well, this is probably where that creature was sitting. The large torch has a decade of black heart on it. You attempt to fiddle with the combination lock, but the buttons and mechanism appear to be rusted and jammed. Um, grab the stick, beat the thick. Okay. Let's grab some olive oil. Good idea. You pour the olive oil into the combination lock and attempt to lubricate the mechanism. Your patience pays off, but the buttons are now usable. That was smart thinking. You attempt to unlock the chest. Oh. I know what to do. What do we got? Uh, four gifts with this pleasure. First woman, a necklace of gold. Alright, so. Gold. White. Green. Red. Gold, white, green, red. Gold, white, green, red. Gold, white, green. Oh shit! Damn it! Damn it! D <laughs> fuck it. All right. There we go. You unlock the opens and the chest swings upwards. Up inside, it seems the only thing in here is a set of toy alphabet blocks. So you remove the blocks and place them on the floor. What? A set of alphabet blocks. Emily? No. E M I L Y? Is it Emily? Is it Emily? <laughs> Is it Emily? Oh shit, that's right, writing her name. Oh fuck. That was a bad idea. What was that? What do you think? What was that? It sounded like it came from downstairs. Let's go fucking fight it. I know what to do. Poke her with the stick. <laughs> it doesn't work. Why not? <laughs> you fucking don't fight me. The little girl holding her face and sobs away. Please. Please, will you help me? My puppet broke it. It needs mending. You're certain she's talking to you. She tosses two small objects to the ground. Fix my puppet. Slowly. Cautiously, you reach over and pick up the broken toy. All right. You thread the cotton through the needle. Listen, I don't no normally do this, but it should be really easy. You carefully use the needle and thread the sew the poppet's face's black body into its head on its body. Uh, uh, here you go, little girl. You hand the fixed poppet to the child. She reaches out and takes it from you. Thank you for helping me. It's so nice of you. Hello, little girl. You Are you Emily? That's a name I've not heard for a long time. That's a, okay. <laughs> That's a name I've not heard for a long time. It is my name, or so I'm told, though I'm not familiar with whoever you are. That's a lovely poppet you have there. Sometimes I think that they're my only friends. I get so lonely here. There's nobody to play with. Your daddy really misses you. You know my daddy? You tell her about the weaponsmith Olaf. Oh, how I'd love... I'd so love to see him if only once. I wish I could leave this place, but I'm unable to do so myself. I miss him so much. Come with me. Set me free. <laughs> uh, let me take you home. Oh, thank you so much. You're such a kind-hearted soul for showing such mercy. Nobody has ever this been kind to show me so much grace. You had no reason to help, and yet you risked so much coming to do so. You're truly a wonderful human being. 
Oh no, as a token of my gratitude, I'd like to do something for you in return. Would you let me stop your heart? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Die, bitch! Oh my god! Drink this potion, please. Alright, let me drink another one. There we go. Alright, let's go. Let's fight this bitch. Damn. Die, bitch. Oh, she missed. Yeah. Damn it. All right, one more hit should do it. She hit me. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Drink this. He's gonna hit me again, and I'm gonna drink it again. Die. Yes. Mm. Final swipe of your blade, you finish off the demon child. As she disappears into thin air, she drops a small silver object. Pick it up and examine what appears to be a small silver trinket. You've gained an amulet piece. You can check how many you have via the option screen. Oh. Suddenly, feel a, su a sudden feeling of tranquility engulfs you. It's almost like a weight has been lifted off your chest and the atmosphere of the house has suddenly become more peaceful. Whatever danger was here is now gone forever. You can rest easy. You still can't help feeling sorry for the poor child that you just cleaved in half. But at least her soul can rest in pieces now. Whatever possessed her can't harm her anymore. Blah, 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 blah. Jesus. Alright then. It's a very small key. Unfortunately, it's locked. Well then. Jesus, fuck, man. They serve their purpose and you have no reason to play around with them anymore. Aw, oh, come on, man. Alright, you already have a bump. That's it, huh? Alright, let's go. Let's save first. 26%? How big is this game? Oh my god, what the? You currently have... Ugh. Alright, let's get out of here. Oh my god. Fook. Who do I talk to? Hey lady, how you doing? You have any new potions yet? <laughs> Porcelain dolls no more. Emily's <laughs> soul is at peace. Goddess be praised, I'm so glad you've made it out alive. Once again, you've done us all a great service and thank you for putting Olaf at peace. Now will you help me find out why I'm here? I should just leave. Tell me, how did you arrive here? You explain how you woke up in the log cabin with absolutely no recollection of how you got there. She carefully listens to your story and pauses for a brief moment before speaking. You know, you want to know what I th believe in my heart. I think you're here for a divine reason. Call it fate if you like. From what I understand, the log cabin you mentioned belonged to a powerful black magician who is no longer with us. I don't know who... I don't know his name or where his body lies, but I do know. This land has a history of such people. I am certain the demons that plague this land are of their doing. Perhaps you're here to undo their work. Where would I find out more about this black magician? It is rumored there is is a learned scholar living in the mountains. Apparently an old witch who is very knowledgeable about past inhabitants and events. If you're seeking answers about this land or its people, then perhaps it would be wise to speak with her regarding these matters. However, finding her will not be easy. 
The path to her cave is said to be extremely dangerous, and only those who know the safe route can reach her. The witch has supposedly hidden herself well, as it said she does not like visitors. There was once a map that showed the safe path to her cave. From my understanding, it was actually two separate sheets of paper, which consisted of a map and a base. When those two were aligned on top of one another and held to the light, it would reveal the correct route. But from what I heard, the owner of the map tore the top sheet into four pieces to prevent anyone reaching her. If you can find the four map pieces plus the map base piece and assemble them correctly, you'll be able to visit her. Where do I begin my search for the map pieces? Well, let me tell you this. Magicians, sages, and witches are all knowledged, are all well knowledged about others like them. The man who owned the plantation house where you must where you met the porcelain doll was not only well knowledged in science and medicine, but also a scholar in the dark arts. His name is Dr. Eli. He is buried northwest of here in an unmarked grave. If you want to find the map pieces, perhaps you should begin your search there. One more thing before you go. There exists an old tree near here known as the Tree of Life. A local legend claims the tree can magically heal all your wounds. Although there is no evidence to support such claims, it might be worth looking into. If the legend is true, it may be of great use to you. Tell me about the grave. Blop, blop. You have any new potions yet? Yes, I have medium-sized ones now. They will restore more health than smaller ones you are used to. Yes! You got some cool-looking stuff. Ooh, ooh. Awesome! All right. Okay, bye. Let me go talk to Olaf. Hey, bud. Emily is finally at peace. He just stares at you for a moment and says nothing before a while before speaking. You defeated the porcelain doll, huh? You tell him about the events of the plantation house. His eyes slowly well up as he realizes what's happened. He looks at you and begins nodding as the tears stream down his eyes. I never really accepted my little girl as a monster. Since she just disappeared, I lied to myself in false hope that my baby was out there waiting to be rescued. But in my heart, I knew the real truth, and I couldn't face the idea of going out there and ending her life no matter how many people's lives she ended. She may have been a monster in the eyes of society, but in my eyes, she will still be my precious baby girl. Thank you for putting her to rest and bringing peace to her soul. I'll always be grateful to you for that. Hey man, no prob. It's what I do. Kill children. Who the fuck is this guy? Hello there, who are you? He slowly looks up. He slowly looks up at you before speaking. Gunter. Gunter. Gunter I am. Gunter sees all with Gunter's eye. My name is Gunter, but you beware. Gunter can turn into flying bear. This must be the village idiot. Er, uh, okay Gunter. Oh, uh, okay Gunter. Can you tell me who the man in the photograph is? First answer, Gunter's riddle. If you clever than Gunter, then Gunter answer question. Here is riddle. I have no eyes, but I can see. I am round squishy and stuck inside a skull. What am I? Stuck inside a skull? I have no eyes, but I can see. It would be an eyeball, yeah? Yes! You very cleverest and smartest. Gunter now question answer question now. Okay, you show you okay, you show Gunter photo. A fucking weirdo. You show him the photograph, which he immediately puts right up against his face and examines it inch by inch. Suddenly his eyes widen as he quickly hands it back to you. Bad man, bad man. Man in photo, bad man. Him black magician, do bad things to people. Gunter like you. Here, Gunter give you present. He pulls out a small fishing rod and hands it to you. Now you catch fish in Pondo Lake. You catch fish then sell to Gunter. Gunter gives you many good gives you good money for fish. You can now catch fish. If you see how many fish you caught in the options menu. Okay then. Bye. Shh, Gunter meditate and concentrate. You come back later. Okay, fi Okay. <laughs> what a weirdo. You test out your new fishing rod by casting into the village pond. You manage to hook a small glass object which you carefully pull out of the water. Look close you can see it's an old bottle with a paper scroll inside. What? What is this? There's a glass bottle with a rolled up paper inside. As you try there might there's no way you can get inside without breaking it. It might be worth smashing against some something made of bricks. The rusted metal panel looks like it's someone intentionally jammed to the ground. For whatever reason, you have no idea. Carefully grab a hold of the metal panel, gently pull it out of the soil, wipe off the dirt, and carry it with you. 
Weird. Slightly curved metal panel which we found in the pond. It looks like a spade. Oh. Makeshift shovel to combine the panel with a stick. It's weak. Not very useful. Perhaps you need some glue to bind it properly. No! God damn it. You strengthen your custom made shovel with tar. That's better. What? Alright. <laughs> A bunch of reeds which have long since dried and died in the sun. You pick up the dry reeds and carry them with you. Alright. Time to go fishing. It's a piece of shrimp. Caught a shrimp. Interesting. It's just shrimp out here. Why is it just shrimp? Hope Gunter likes fish. I mean shrimp. Durr, of course he likes fish. He wants me to catch it. Okay, well. Here you go, Gunter. Thanks, Gunter. Fucking weirdo. You smash the ball on the well. Gunter doesn't, doesn't appear to be too happy about that. You careful, Gunter not like sharp glass. Glass cut Gunter's skin and then blood comes out of Gunter. You be careful. <laughs> the small scrap of paper which was inside the ball falls to the ground. You pick it up and realize it's a piece of map. You pocket the map piece. Oh. Okay. How you doing? That's it? Really, you don't care? Okay, is that, is that really it, huh? Oh my god, look at all these locations. Alright, so I'm gonna end it here, guys. This is awesome. Oh my god. This <laughs> this is the best. Uh, I'm probably gonna play this game, uh, maybe make it as like a separate series, but this is this is this is cool. Oh my god, this is the this is the best. This is the kind of horror games I want to play all the time. All right, well, this is it for this video, for this for this installment of Halloween for Dark Fear. I'm Seth of the Dead, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya!